we've gone through many iterations, uh, starting from not really knowing how to build rockets at all uh, with with Falcon One, and having four failures actually in reaching orbit. Uh, th- yeah, sorry, three failures, and then the fourth one got to orbit. So fourth one's a charm. Um, so we only barely survived. I was at zero cash basically when we got that fourth one to orbit. Um, and if that fourth one hadn't worked, we, we would have been curtains. So it's definitely not been smooth sailing. Uh, it's been a very difficult ride with just a lot that has been discovered along the way. Just trying to figure out what questions to ask about the design was, was quite difficult. I think it's helpful to have as the objective the creation of a self-sustaining city on Mars. I think this is this has to be the objective, not simply a few people or a base, but a self-sustaining city. Um, the, the acid test really is if these if the ships from Earth stop coming for any reason, does Mars die out for any reason? It could be from but it could be banal or it could be nuclear Armageddon. It doesn't matter. If the if the ships stop coming for any reason, does the city on Mars die out? If it does, we have not we're not in a secure place. I mean, I think this, re- this really might come down to you know on the the great filter front. Is this are, are we going to create a self sustaining city on Mars before or after World War Three? And I think the probability of it being created after World War Three. Hopefully, the, hopefully there's never a World War III, but of, of after is low. So we should try to create, let's make the city self-sustaining before any possible World War III. This is just a risk. This is not, you know, I think sometimes people have difficulty dealing with, with probabilities. You see that this way or that way, but it's really, we just face a, a series of probabilities. There's some chance that we will have a giant war or a super volcano or, you know, a comet might hit the Earth, or we might just self-extinguish. And frankly, right now, civilization is not looking super strong. You know, it's looking a little, little rickety right now, to be frank. Yeah, um, it, it's not an, it's not an escape vehicle. I mean, unless Mars, Mars is made self-sustaining, which will probably not happen in my lifetime. Um, it is certainly not. It's mean, it's meaningless to have an escape. You know, lifeboat or or, or, or or escape hatch or something. If you will, you're simply moving to another place where you will soon die out. That doesn't count. <laughs> so much of a lifeboat, really. So this is really about say, minimizing existential risk for civilization as a whole, and and then uh, having an exciting future that you can look forward to, and a future where we are a spacefaring civilization and multi-planet species is far more exciting than one where we are not. I mean, that's an exciting future. And being forever confined to Earth until some eventual extinction event is depressing and not fun. Um, And uh, we need things that make you want to get out of bed in the morning and be excited about the future. And I think being a space-faring civilization is one of those things that everyone can get excited about.